She's kind of doing a little bit of color change here, going from more red to a little bit of a pale color. This is a totally normal coloration. Obviously, she's not afraid of me. I let her kind of end the sessions right now, so when she gets bored or, you know, kind of is done interacting with me, when I've lost my luster for her, and she goes away, she's got her toy and the food, and she's going into one of the far caves, which I've never seen her go into before, so that's really cool. Our program with all of the animals here at SHED is all based on positive reinforcement. And what that essentially means is that the animals are asked to participate in their health care, in their exercise, in their learning, so that they're stimulated physically, socially, mentally. If we ask the animals to sit here with us, then there's got to be an incentive system for them to want to stay. Positive reinforcement is actually adding a positive consequence to the environment when the animals are doing something that we want them to do. So enrichment and positive reinforcement all work together to encourage behaviors that are gonna generate really positive interactions and really robust and strong welfare. The fun comes where the trainers are providing these really positive and influential reinforcers. Little scratches on their tongues, pats on their back, a herring or a capelin, all these things are a mix of different types of reinforcers that we have with our critters. So the concepts that we're talking about can be spread throughout the whole aquarium because the process is the same. The entire goal of enrichment is to elicit species specific natural behaviors. A lot of our animals do that on their own from time to time, but anytime that we can give them a little boost such as foraging for good food in the substrate is great. It's great for their physical health and their mental health. In my hand, I am holding enrichment devices filled with some different food items that we are going to give to our freshwater stingray. All stingrays, and especially freshwater stingrays, have uh, their mouths at the bottom of their body. So in the wild, they would be spending a lot of their day cruising around, looking for stuff to eat on the bottom, sifting through the sand or whatever substrate they live in. But when we feed, we're not always able to replicate that perfectly. So the enrichment devices are really great because we can kind of dump them in there, let them do their thing, and they're able to spend a lot more time foraging. We want it to be challenging but not impossible to get the food out because we definitely don't want a frustrated animal. So this is our emerald tree boa and from time to time for some exercise and also some mental stimulation we'll take him on little field trips. He gets really excited and starts climbing all over the place so he always is hooked onto something so basically my arms are kind of acting as his tree branch right now. This species is notoriously a little feisty, but he is not. Probably because we do this a lot. Oh, hi, little semi prochilotus. <laughs> Giving you kisses. We made this entire board of fun, basically, is what we called it. A um, bunch of different textures and shapes and things for him to climb on, and all he wanted to do was sit at the top and look at these fish. The tongue flicking, um, that's kind of how they taste their environment, so to speak. And obviously, you can tell he is basically just a tube full of muscles and can support himself pretty well, even fully extended. We try to recreate A, their natural habitat with all the bells and whistles we can get, and B, any sort of item that just makes their life better by having something to do. Right now, I have food items for her to encourage her positively to come over and interact with us. The oysters that we give her are all different species. You can see they're closed still, so she'll have to pry them open. Both of these are sinking enrichment items, um, so I can like shove some shrimp in here and throw it in for her to kind of find. There she comes. That's a good girl. She's only about eight months old. They live to be three to five years. She'll grow to a span of, I mean, I think their arm span can be up to 14 feet. A really, really big one is gonna weigh about 
60 to 80 pounds. And she was like that big when she came in. I mean, she was so small, it was amazing. All species of octopus grow really fast. Short lifespan, very quick growth. Hi. With octopus, one of the main things that we're looking for sometimes as far as enrichment goals are to encourage foraging hunting. The foraging is a little bit easier to obtain because you can hide things in a, a Kong toy or something of that nature and put it somewhere and let her find it. Hunting behavior is a little bit harder because hunting requires you to give a live food item. Yeah. Apparently I am more enriching than the enrichment. So. There is a lesson there. <laughs> we are about to see a zebra shark training session. It involves a target, which is this. Each species of shark in this exhibit has their own individual shape um, and color patterns. And we pair that with an audio cue. So for the zebra sharks, it's just a dog clicker. Since I'm able to feed these animals as individuals, since they are trained to come here, I'm able to just go ahead and stuff their vitamins um, into the squid like that, so then we don't have to worry about them spitting it out. Kind of similar like what you might do with um, even pets at home if you've ever had to hide medicine. Zebra sharks have what's called buccal pumping. Basically just means they have different muscles, a different anatomy, that they can sleep on the bottom or kind of stop in the water column and still be pumping water over their gills and breathe that way. Since they're able to do that, we're able to add a step to their training. So this is their target buoy, um, so they will actually touch their noses to this, and then receive a piece of food that way. It just allows us to kind of say which one is getting food at that moment and kind of direct them around. This is Eli right here. He is our male. And this is Vera. She is our female. And you can kind of see them making that little suction, and she bit the buoy. These behaviors are more to help us care for them. So naturally they might be digging through the sand and looking for food that way. This is more to have them participate in their own care. I want to make sure that they're eating each piece and having to think about something else while they're up here. We take these concepts of positive reinforcement, operant conditioning, and understanding of behaviors, and not only can we apply them within our doors, within this cultural gem here in Chicago, but we can take this and also apply this out into the wild. When animals come ashore and they're in need of rescue and rehabilitation, the things that we've learned with our animals can be directly applied to their welfare and to their benefit. This is something that you can take home to your families. You know, when your children do something right and you tell them that you love them and you tell them you give them a hug, you give them something positive, that behavior is going to be expressed again. And that's a lesson that we all can learn from the animals here at the Shed Aquarium.